In this video, we're going to learn how to make a quiz game where the questions and answers have been stored in an external JSON file using Python. So JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's a very common file format for things like exchanging data, configuration files, and just storing data in general. So in a JSON file, we can have an array of data, which is kind of like a list. We can make one with an open square bracket and close square bracket like this. Then we'll use an object made up of key value pairs to represent each question, its options, and the correct answer. We can create an object using open curly brace and close curly brace. Then we'll have the key value pairs. So we'll have the key question and the value, what is the capital of France? Then we'll have a comma for the next key value pair and we'll have options. Here we'll have an array and we'll have London and Berlin and Paris and Rome in the array as the options. Then for the correct answer, we'll have answer is Paris. And that is our first question, its options and the correct answer. Now to make more elements of this array, we'll use commas. So we'll have comma, then we'll have our next question, its options and the correct answer. So we'll copy this here. And this time we'll have a different question. We'll have which planet is closest to the sun? And we'll have the options of Venus and Mercury and Earth and Mars. And the correct answer is Mercury. Then we'll have one more question. So we'll copy this here and we'll paste it here. And this time the question will be a math question. We'll have what is nine times six? We'll have our options. We'll have 42 and 54 and 64 and 72. And the correct answer here is 54. So now we have three questions. We could have more, but this is pretty good. So we'll save this. Now we can actually use a module in Python to easily read this data and turn it into Python data. So this array here and these arrays here, they're going to become lists. And these objects here, they're going to become Python dictionaries. So I'll fix this and fix this and save it. And then over here, we'll import that JSON module with import JSON. Now this module has a function called load, which will allow us to easily read in the contents of that file and work with them as Python data. To use it, we have to first open the file. So here we'll have with open quiz.json as f. So what this will do is open up the file quiz.json for reading and f is an object which allows us to access that file. We'll call the json modules load function and pass it f and that function is going to use that object to read in the contents of the file. What it's going to return is a python representation of the data in that file. In this case it's going to be a list of dictionaries. We'll see that. So here we'll store the return value into a variable called quiz data. Then down here, we'll output quiz data using print. So we'll have print and quiz data. And if we save this and then run the program, we'll get here this list. And you can see inside the list, we have these Python dictionaries made up of each question, its options, and the correct answer. So now we can use this data to actually have our Python application carry out the quiz. So next, let's randomly shuffle the list of questions. That way the order is different each time the program runs. To do this, we'll import the random module with import random. And this module has a function called shuffle, which will randomly rearrange the items in the list quiz data. So here we'll have random dot shuffle and we'll pass it quiz data to randomly rearrange the items in that list. We'll keep track of the score the user has with score and we'll set score to zero initially. We'll also keep track of what question number the user is on using a question number variable, which we'll initially set to one. Then we'll have a list containing the letters we're going to use to represent each question option. So we'll have letters is equal to A, B, C, and D, as is typical on a multiple choice quiz. Now we'll output a welcome message. And what I've done is grab some fun characters here to use as part of this quiz. 
these characters are part of the UTF-8 character encoding, which Python uses by default. And I found them using documentation like this online, where I can just copy the character and then paste it into my document. I did it in advance though to save some time. So we'll output a welcome message here with print, and we'll have this brain character here, and we'll say welcome to the multiple choice quiz, and then we'll have backslash in there for a new line. Then we'll loop through each question and present the question and the options. So we'll have here for question in quiz data. So this loop is going to run for each item in the quiz data list. And each time it does, question is going to be set to the next item in that list. And remember, the items in that list are dictionaries. We'll output the question number and the question text itself first. So here we'll call print and we'll use an F string and we'll have question. Then we'll use a placeholder with these curly braces to output the question number. Then we'll have a colon. Then we'll have question and we'll access the actual question text using the question key. So here, this F string is going to produce a new string. These placeholders here are going to allow us to inject values into that string. So we'll put the question number here after question. Then we'll have colon. Then we'll have the question text. And here we're actually accessing the question key of the dictionary. Then after this, we'll increment the question number with question number plus equals one. So that way we increment the question number with each iteration of this loop. Let's save this and try it out so far. So we'll save this and run the program. And now we're outputting each question. We get question one, question two, and question three. And if we run it again, We'll get the questions here in a different order due to that shuffling of the list. Now let's output each question option. So we're gonna extract the options first with options is equal to question options here. And what we're doing here is just extracting the list from this key of the dictionary. And we'll store that into a variable called options. Then we'll loop through and output the options. So we'll have here for i in range of the length of options. So what this will do is find the length of the options list, which is going to be four. This loop is going to run with I going from zero to one to two to three. And each time we'll actually output each letter and the associated option with that letter. So we'll have print. And again, we'll have an F string. We'll have a couple spaces. Then we'll have letters at the index I and then dot to have a dot B dot, C dot, D dot, and so on. And then options at the index I. So what we're doing here is outputting the letters A, B, C, and D with each option. As we go through this letters list here using this counter variable here I. And then each time we also output the option associated with that letter with options at the index I. Let's try this out. We'll save it and run the program. And now we get these options here for each question. So we have option A, B, C, and D for this question here and so on. Next, let's prompt the user to enter their choice, A, B, C, or D. So we'll call input and we'll pass it the string, your choice, A, B, C, or D. And this will prompt the user with the text, your choice, A, B, C, or D colon. And this function is going to return the string the user enters. What we'll do is convert any characters in that string to uppercase using dot upper. Then we'll also strip away any prefixed or postfixed whitespace characters using strip. So if the user enters in something like space lowercase a, what would happen is this would be converted into uppercase a because the white space character will be stripped away and the lowercase a character will be made uppercase. This just handles a wider range of input. We'll store the user input into a variable called user input. Then we'll check to see if the user input is in the list letters, because if it's not, it's not valid input. So we'll have here, if user input is in letters, then it's valid input. If it's not, we'll output an error message. 
So here we'll have print and we'll have backslash n and we'll have invalid choice skipping question followed by a new line with backslash n. And what I'll do is copy in this sort of caution character here to make it a bit more fun. So I'll put that in there. Now in the case that the user did enter in a valid choice, we want to determine if the user got the answer correct or not. To do this, we'll want to compare the text of the selected answer with the actual correct answer. To do this, we'll first find the selected answer text. So we'll have here index is equal to letters dot index user input. So remember, user input is going to be one of uppercase A, B, C, or D at this point. And letters is a list containing those uppercase letters. Index is going to return the index in this list where the user's entered input was found. In other words, was A, B, C, or D entered. And this is going to return the index of that letter in this list. And we'll store that into a variable called index. We're going to use this to access the selected option. So here we'll have selected is equal to, and we'll have options at this index. So what we're doing here is finding the corresponding option for that letter. And we're putting that option text into the variable selected. Then we can compare selected to the correct answer. So we'll have here, if selected, is equal to the correct answer that's stored at the answer key in the dictionary, that means the user got the question correct. And we'll put that. We'll have here print and a new line, and we'll have correct exclamation mark and a new line. And again, we'll take this from up here and put it down here to make it a bit more fun. Then if they did not get it correct, we'll put that. So we'll have else and we'll call print. And we'll say backslash n, this time we'll say wrong. We'll say the correct answer is, and we'll put the correct answer. So we'll have here inside a placeholder, question, and then the answer text, followed by backslash n for a new line. And again, we'll go up here. We'll take this symbol here for the wrong answer. And we'll paste that down here. And this string here has to be an F string because we're using this placeholder here. Now, every time they get a question right, we're going to increase their score by one with score plus equals one. Then once this loop is done, because they've answered all the questions, we'll have put that the quiz is complete and we'll also put their score. So one more time, we'll go up here and we'll get this here for the quiz complete message. Then down here, we'll have put that message. So we'll have print, we'll have an F string, and we'll say quiz complete. You scored, and we'll output their score out of, and then we'll output the number of questions. So we'll have here the length of the quiz data list. And that should do it. So we'll save the program and we'll try it out. So we'll enter in an incorrect answer for this one, A. Wrong, correct answer is Paris, that looks good. Which planet is closest to the sun? One to Mercury, that's correct. We get correct, and what is nine times six? We'll put in B, which is correct. And again, we get correct, and now we get quiz complete, you scored two out of three. So this is how we can create a quiz in Python using a JSON file to store the quiz data. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.